First question right here, Ann. Uh, tomorrow is the three-year anniversary of your elimination from the Toronto series in game six and Clay getting injured. I'm wondering if you can just remember your emotions on that day. You know, I just watched a video of you slamming that ball down when Clay went down and squatting and, you know, looking very pensive. Um, your emotions and then also some perspective of, like, three years later, here you are back in a critical game five. Yeah, it was a... Uh Mixed emotions all the way around. I had, uh, you know, Katie's injury a couple of days before. Clay going down, us trying to just find a way to stay alive. Um, it was the uh, the end of an era at Oracle as well, so it was a lot going on. Um, I don't really. It's hard to like pick out exactly what you were feeling because it was all kind of mixed together. But you know, you, you, we lost the game. Clay goes down. You know, he's he's probably gonna be out for a while. You're getting ready for the summer, trying to you know regroup and figure out what's gonna happen next year and all that. And I think it's three years ago and all that we've been through, um, all that Clay's been through, you know, personally since that time and to be back here. It adds to the sense of gratitude of being back on the stage. Um, and that, that, that chapter will always be part of our, our journey, for sure. That's something we probably talk about for a very long time. And hopefully we can get this job done and, and uh, pay homage to that three-year journey, actually leading to something truly special. Ron? Ron Krejcik, San Francisco Chronicle. Rory's up too, in case you were wondering. I'm sure. I was wondering. <laughs> Thank you very much. I know it's my job. So. <laughs> um, as much defensive attention and physicality as you faced throughout the playoffs and in this series, how much more or what different do you expect tomorrow night, given the way you played Friday? Um, I don't know, because you know, every team's built different. Every team has a certain way of doing things that you've you know, perfected or try to perfect over the course of a season. They have a certain defensive identity that has been successful for them. You obviously understand in a series, adjustments can happen on the fly in between games. You got to be ready to adapt. Uh, and I think you know, I'll be ready for that. We will be ready for that, whatever it is. But at the end of the day, for us to be successful – and win two more games, it comes down to the way that we defend, the way that we um, bring intensity, especially the start games, understanding how they respond after losses. Um, that was one of the big points in the series. Two great teams, they know how to respond, they know how to win in other people's buildings. We've, we've shown that, they've shown that, uh, and we have to be ready for that response and hopefully you know, throw the first punch tomorrow whatever adjustment that means is going to be a part of it, but it's secondary to just the effort and intensity and physicality that we need to have, um, knowing that's what, that's their calling card. That's how they, you know, try to force success uh, when, when they're when they're coming off a loss. Tim? Steph, I think Clay's leading you guys in minutes played in the playoffs. He's way up there. Listen, you're second on the team. You're way up there on the list of most playoff minutes. You're the well, old guy. You should be a six-man, though. Sitting here. <laughs> Jeez. That's funny. Wow. Wow. Uh, um, now you've thrown me off. No, you're coming off. The, you know, you had the foot thing. Uh, you guys are the old guys, yet you seem you might be getting stronger. Do you have a sense of pride in that? And what might it mean, like, how long this window is going to be open? We've talked about that. All We feel like I've said it plenty of times. We have a lot left in the tank in terms of what we can do out there on the floor. And they bring up the age thing. It, it's something to talk about, but it doesn't really uh, reflect how we approach this playoff journey and our confidence, what we can do going forward. But that doesn't happen by accident. It's just the work that you put into it. Uh, you know, Clay, especially the, fa the fact that he was on a minutes restriction for what, like a month, and slowly got to ramp it up. Uh, you know, every couple of weeks leading up to the playoffs, and I think he was so proud of himself that when he first, I think, eclipsed 40 minutes in a regular season game one time. Just the, the pride of like 
he, he's talked about it like a year ago he wasn't even running so it uh it speaks to just how much this matters how important we know the work that goes on behind the scenes is to being ready for whatever happens out there uh, in the games that matter so we're obviously only worried about right now but we definitely feel like we have a lot left in the tank anthony yeah two questions one quick one just how does the foot feel great any treatment or anything you've needed or always but yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then on the Draymond, um, you know, this is obviously an, uh, a challenge for him offensively in the series with their length, the way they're playing. What is the key to, you know, I guess thriving better offensively when he's on the floor? It it comes down to understanding that we have our certain pet plays and actions that we have done for years and years and years. They've scouted it. They have a certain approach and personnel that try to take those away. And some of our bread and butter plays, but a lot of it is just being a lot more organized on our spacing and our force on pick and rolls, on cuts and stuff like that, so that we can just get everybody in the right spots. And whether they want to shade, you know, off a certain guy or try to clog things up, we have a counter to all of that. And I think he is going to do an amazing job of, of adapting and figuring out where he can find his his, his angles, his his, uh, his ways to impact on the offensive end. And that will, again, feed off of the way he, he, he impacts the game on the defensive end every game. So usually the high IQ guys figure it out, and he's he's at the top of that list when it comes to understanding the game of basketball. On your left, second row. Hey, Steph, Alex Espinoza with 95.7 The Game. Uh, you're 3-0 and with those purple shoes. Uh, is there anything to that? Are you going to bring them back out again at some point? I did not even know that. Yeah. So I appreciate you. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if that messes with the juju on there, if I'm aware of the record. So now uh, I got a lot of different colors, so we'll see, we'll see what happens. <laughs> God, you know Adam. I got me thinking now, too. <laughs> Adam, next. Shoot. Steph, uh, the U.S. Open's obviously in Boston this week. Um, you have obviously much bigger priorities, but do you like try to squeeze in part of the practice round Wednesday? Do you have like, golfers hitting up for tickets? Do you <laughs> watch it on Thursday and chill? Or? I got a g- couple friends on the tour that will probably hit me up between now and next week if they uh, they get the early tee time, the early late on on, uh, on Thursday. We'll see. Or Thursday, Friday, we'll see. But I'm not going out there. It's obviously, all my attention is on rest and recovery and getting ready. I'll pop in front of the TV and make sure I watch as much of it as, as possible, though. Joe, would you forward, forward those tickets our way? Say what? Forward those tickets our oh, way. Oh, absolutely. I've never been to the country club of Brookline, so I, you know, you send me some pictures if you get out there. What's um When you have a game like you had on Friday, what's that like to watch the film of it? Um, I mean, it's, I don't know, it's kind of, I mean, it's cool because when you watch film, there's a lot of different emotions because you usually know the outcome of the game. And so whether you play well individually or not, you always know what happens at the end. It's like watching the end of a movie. It's always nice to know that the movie turns out great at the end. But uh, I think it's more so just the balance of watching what worked and trying to understand those patterns so that you can repeat that for the next game, maybe anticipate some adjustments that might happen and try to slow it down and try to be one step ahead of that. Um, in the meantime, I'm also watching a lot of diff- different reactions in the crowd and on the bench and stuff like that, too. That's always some good entertainment. Back right. Steph. Steve was just comparing you to Roger Federer in terms of how the greats do things, and he was. I gotta get a list of all the people he's compared: Tim Duncan, <laughs> Roger Federer. Who added to the list? What's the? What, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, it's That's okay. That. It's okay. Today it was Roger. And he was saying, especially in terms of, he said that you guys met him a few years ago in China, and and how you find that joy in, in the daily routine, the the work you put in, the discipline. So, in your perspective, how is that to finding that joy and that passion and, and that work that you put in every day? to sustain the highest level for a long period of time? It goes back to just how I started in the game back when I was playing AAU back in the day. Um, I love to work. You kind of get lost in the 
in the, you know, the sessions you have on the court and practice, in the weight room, wherever it is, because you know it's going to lead to you being as prepared as possible for, for those games. Um, try to have as much fun as possible. You know, the days that you want to get up and do the work, the days that you don't, um, days you're tired, all that type of stuff. But it's all built on just my approach, I think, from the time I started and just trying to carry that every year for as long as I can. And, uh, it, you know, win, lose, whatever it is, how, no matter how you play, you have to keep coming back to the to the well to, to you know, keep sharpening the toolkit and find ways to, to evolve your game. That is the hardest part of what we do. I mean, going out there on the floor, everything's more reactive and you're you're kind of just living in the competition. But the, the hardest part of what we do is the grind of the year-long uh, prep that that it takes to be you know great at this level. Davide and Vince, the last two. Hey, Steph, uh, Davide, Chinellato with uh, Gazzetta in Italy. Um, you're, you're playing in, in your six finals in eight years. How much has it become routine for you and how much is... Wow, I'm playing for a championship again. Uh, you understand the, the, I guess, the routine of it and the ebbs and flows of game days, off days, media days, travel days, especially, you know, how to keep your body prepared on those long east, east to west coast flights and all that. So that helps with the, just the experience. Every task is different, though, when you get out there because it's – even when we played Cleveland four times, it's a different team every year that you had to kind of prepare against. And, um, you know, that's that's just part of it. And I love every every experience at this at this stage because um, there's so much attention on what we do. You understand the whole world's watching you when you're out there on the court. And you're obviously keeping in mind what you're playing for and be the last team standing. So I, I love everything about it. Thanks. Steph, um, during game four, you couldn't see it because you were playing, but Dwayne Wade and LeBron James had back and forth praising you throughout the course of the game. And I think Dwayne said something after it, saying that they got to make room for you on the Mount Rushmore. So when you see that, if you see that, are you amused? Are you surprised? Do you roll your eyes? Like, what is your reaction when you hear stuff like that or see it? You know, any player will tell you when you get – you know, respect and praise from your, your colleagues and the guys that have been on the stage and know what this is about, know how hard it is to be at this level and do what we do. That means the world. Um, you obviously want everybody to appreciate what you do and all that, but it hits different when it's people that, you know, you looked up to once upon a time, uh, you know, when they were, you know, having their first and second experiences and you're watching them, like, I wonder what that's like. And then you have some battles and for them to, you know, go out of their way and, and speak about your impact on the game and all that type of stuff, it means the world for sure. Because uh, it takes, you know, a great to recognize what that what it takes to do what we do for sure. Thank you, Steph.